Hey everyone, welcome to Live Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse, and today we're gonna do a shorter than normal stream because I have a meeting in less than an hour. Uh, and also, we're doing something that may end up being a little bit boring. We're doing some data transfer. So it needs to be done. I, I need to get all this data transferred really soon. So I'd like to have um, I'd like to be done with it, be done with the data transfer and just finish out getting a test version of this site available on a public URL for everyone to try. Give us a month before we need to launch, you know, to have um, as many people as possible test it and get feedback. So that's why we're doing uh, just some data transfer stuff, you know, on the stream, which I usually save for uh, when I'm not streaming. But I thought it might be useful to show it. And um, I'm a little bit, a little bit tired today. Uh, my daughter Cordelia, who's one and a half, just wanted to party last night, so she didn't feel like sleeping. Uh, so if I if I sound a little like uh, less enthusiastic than normal, that's why. So I'm gonna try my best to fight that though. Okay, so let's get started. Let me switch my view and. The first thing I'm going to do is just introduce you to the code we're using to migrate. So it's been a long time since I've, I've showed this code uh, on a stream. So you may, not be, um, you may not be familiar with it unless you watched, I don't know, maybe two months ago might have been the last time we showed it. So this was basically built by one of the, the viewers. So Harshit uh, built this. And I've modified it depending on the type of content that I need to bring over. Uh, but what we're doing is we're bringing in a few packages. Right? So this is Node.js. In particular, we have SQLize and Fetch. So SQLize helps us to get data from a SQL database. In one case, we're going from one type of SQL database to another type of SQL database. So SQL Server to MySQL. So we're, we have our database info, right? So name, password, everything we need to actually get in there. And I can connect to this database, but only from this computer that I'm at right now and only if I'm on a certain network. So um, I'm a little bit limited in, in what I can do. So. Uh, we're connecting to the SQL Server database, and then we're pulling out data. Right? So we have the SQL query here, and this is just using a template literal, right, to, to write our SQL query. So I manually modify the SQL query based on the data that I'm getting. So on my other screen, I just have an Excel spreadsheet that I, I created from that database that gives me the content of each uh, I don't know what do you say, like each row in the Excel spreadsheet gives me one item in the database. And I can see the content, I can see the folder ID, and that's what we're, we're using. The folder ID is the key piece of content. So we want to bring over the content ID, the title, the content HTML, the teaser, the date created um, from our content uh, table where folder ID is whatever we set it to. In this case, I just imported everything from folder 441. And then data length uh, of content HTML is greater than zero. So there's there are a lot of items in the database that have no content at all. I don't want to bother bringing them over. So that's why we have this piece to filter out. So we're grabbing all that. And then the next step is let's insert it into a MySQL database. So that's why we're using fetch. That's why we imported fetch here, node fetch. So in the browser now, depending on your browser, you would automatically have access to fetch, but this is server side. So we have to bring in node fetch or something like that. There's another package called unfetch that'll do the same thing. Um, so 
we're going to use the WordPress API to put the data into our MySQL database because we're using WordPress to manage that database. So why not just use the API and it will make sure that that data gets put in in the proper order in just the right way that WordPress likes. So that's why we ended up doing it like that. So you can see here we we take our WordPress um, our URI. So basically, we have the URL. We already have uh, the URL that we're we're trying to send it to uh, here, and then we just add in the post type that we want it to go into. In this case, I was adding it into graduate program, which is a post type that I just created a few minutes ago uh, to handle some of that data. We have a few other options here that are commented out, but if we needed to make some changes to the titles, we're using some regular expressions to do that. In this case, we don't need to, or I didn't need to for that last post type. We also are doing some things to manipulate the date so that the date gets into the the format the date's in in the old server is not the right format we need for the new server so we do some stuff to make sure it is in the right format and then this is the how we format the data so we basically just take the data in the way that the wordpress api wants it and we just plug in what we've gotten from the sql server so WordPress doesn't want content HTML, they want content. See, so we just put it in the right, the right way, and we just do a simple fetch, right? And we just send that data to the right place. And then the WordPress API takes care of all of the rest and actually inserting that into the right place in the MySQL database. So, That's it. I mean, it's it's it works. It it works really really well, um, but it's not it's not super complicated to go through it. So let's do some some more migration. Uh, let me say hello to everybody. I, I see there's uh, some of you saying hi. Um, I see there's already a few questions. Let me let's do it like this. What time is it? Okay. Let me start my Pomodoro timer. I'm going to do one Pomodoro session, and then I'll answer all the questions after that, up until um, maybe about five minutes till 3 p.m. Eastern time, and then I'll have to stop and go to a meeting. Okay, so hang in there if you've asked a question, or if you want to ask a question, I'll get to it in about 25 minutes. So for now, let's... We're going to basically be here for most of the time. If we need to make another custom post type, we're going to be here. If you're interested in the plugin that we created to handle all these different custom post types and taxonomies, this is now on the GitHub repo. So if you go to that FUS Marcom GitHub organization, this is the latest repository there. I've, I've added that plugin, which that's, that's new. I, I just did that last week. Uh, before that, I wasn't tracking it with Git. Uh, all right, so I have on a few of my other screens, I have some uh, some data uh, already set up in terms of like that spreadsheet that I told you about and just a list of items that I've, as I've gone through building the site, I've noticed like, hey, we don't have this data yet. So owners program pages, save us video pages. All right, so let's see. Here's, here's my process. Let me drag some of this over to the screen. And here's my, oops. Let me organize this a bit better. Let's pull this over here. There we are. Okay. So what I've been doing is basically just searching the site to find out some of the pages. This is the current website, Summer Ancient and Biblical Languages Institute. So I currently don't have any of the data for this program that we have. 
Um, so our, our ancient language institute. Oh, that's a PDF. All right, definitely don't need to worry about that right now. There we are. So I go in here and just try to find, see like, all right, how many pieces of data are we looking at? four or five maybe like five pages so not really a lot occasionally these pages will be broken up into different pieces of data so it may be more than five that we're looking at and then I'll grab some of the text and um, usually it's it's just enough to grab like seven or eight words and then I go over to my spreadsheet which I'm gonna pull this over so that you all can see it Over here. So I go over to my spreadsheet. This is going to be really small. It, it doesn't really matter to be able to read it. It's just like the concept of how I'm doing this. So I paste that in and try to find it. And it looks like it's not here. That's not good news. <laughs> so, well, it may or may not be good news. It could mean that I've already brought it over uh, and didn't realize it at the time that I brought that data over. So, yes, there we are. Let me try to grab just some other piece of data from here. Um, let's see, maybe this one. Uh, the other possibility is that this page has been edited since I made a copy. I had a copy made of the database, and so uh, this data is actually newer than what I had. So that's why I'm gonna to try to grab another piece of data and try to do a search with that. There we are. Okay, so it looks like we are we are able to find this. Awesome. So this is a little bit small, so you may not be able to see it, but I found a few pages that do say that that's S-A-B-L Institute. And now I can look over here at the folder number, and it's 346. And if I look, every piece of data here in that 346 folder all have to do with that same institute. So safe to say we can grab this, everything in this 346 folder, and categorize it in, in our new database as... Um, as that type of, of data. So, let's see. Oh, no, I just lost it. Three, four, six. Yeah, this, this spreadsheet is <laughs> a little intense. Um, now, I want to make sure. It seems like I'm missing a page. One, two, three, four. Why is there only four? One, two, three, four, five. Right, let me see what this page is. See, this is like part detective work. <laughs> All right, this explains why I only have four pieces of data because this page doesn't really have content. It's pulling. Um, other content that we've already brought over, but just in a different post type. These, this content is stored under our faculty profiles. So we've already pulled these over. So that explains why. So I, I need to be really careful to make sure that I don't miss parts, because that could be a mess later on uh, when you know I'm trying to launch and people are saying, this page doesn't work, this page doesn't work. and uh, So this is good this this should be fine SAPL, SAPL. so we may need to make a custom post type for this so let me bring over and show you what we have going on in wordpress so right now okay we do have a post type for institutes let's check out if we have anything in there yet what You gotta be kidding me. I have this institute text, ancient languages. 
All right, let's see. Read the ancient writers from their words, experience immersion. We may, I may have already brought this over. If so, that is excellent. Course credit and descriptions. Let's see if we have that. Wow, and it's already categorized? You gotta be kidding me. So uh, this is really good news. Unfortunately, I didn't, when I first started bringing over data, I was just bringing over a ton of data and I didn't take the time to mark down what I was bringing over. And so uh, occasionally, uh, not often, but occasionally I run into this where I've actually already brought over data, but it was so long ago that I didn't even remember. So this is great. Now what we can do is go in here and delete these rows. I made a copy of the original spreadsheet I was working off of. What in this one, every time I verify the data is there, I delete the rows. So ideally what will happen is once I have no rows left, I will know that I've transferred every bit of data. So that's the idea. I just have to make sure I'm very careful so that that in fact is, is really the case. So it looks like for sure everything in this folder here I can go through, but also um, we have this Veritas Center, which I believe I saw that in there as well. We can verify that. Um, Veritas. I thought we had it in here. Oh, there's two pages. Let's see. The Child Conference. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I guess I gave them their own custom post type. So, Veritas. So we do have Veritas stuff in here. There's a Center for Bioethics. Do I have that? It doesn't seem like I have that particular piece of data. Oh, I do. I have it here. Veritas Center for Public Ethics. All right. Um, I will, I'll have to figure out what the heck is going on with that because I don't really see why I would want to separate out those two into different post types. But I have verified that it's there, so we can delete that as well. That's great. Now I can mark that off my list. And next thing on the list are honors programs, which is awesome because I just happen to have the honors program pages right here. All right, honors program. It looks like we only have three, three pages here, honors program requirements. Let's verify though and we can get rid of this and this. We'll go back to our search. Type in honors program. Okay, so this is actually treated as if it were a major in terms of um, where this content is on the site and the URL it's given. So it's the same way as, as we would treat a program or a major. So that's interesting. And we also have two different URLs for this. We have one with a hyphen and one without a hyphen. I bet they go to the same page. They do. <laughs> uh, we'll have to make sure we account for that in our routing uh, if we haven't already. But, um, all right. So it looks okay. Like we, we have that honors program, the great thinkers, requirements. information there we go requirements is here under honors program as well and then Austria 
So those are the three things we need. And none of this is, okay, good. So we have this honors program stuff. What I think we'll do then is we'll put this data in the same place as we would put other majors and things like that. And I think we'll categorize it underneath the classics category that we already have since that's where it's it's being categorized right now we probably should verify that it's not already there so let's go into our majors section type in honors honors program quick links so it looks like we don't have everything honors program quick links okay so we do have one piece of data here, Oops. but not everything. So let's pull this over then. So we need a few pieces of information, and that is the folder ID, which looks like it's 340. So we're going to put in 340 into here. Okay. And then in this case, we want this to be under the major post type, so we're going to type in major. And then we also want to make sure this isn't the right category. So we have this faculty department taxonomy, and we have to get the category ID. So let's go back over here where WordPress is and make sure we can get the right ID. So if we go to faculty department, and we go over to classics if I hover over it the URL shows up really small at the bottom and that URL has the ID number which is 19 that's the fastest way that I've found to just get the ID right away with the fewest number of clicks so I get 19 so now I can go back here type in 19 and that's all we have to change and now I can just run this. So I'm going to run node migrate.js because that's what this file is called that we're working in. We can do migrate.js and see uh, it's, you know, it gives us a little message here of, you know, here's the SQL query that we're running. And then here's how many posts we brought over, which is three, which is what we expected. I canceled that out just by pressing control C. Now we can go back over to WordPress and verify that that data is there now. So if we go back to, let's see, uh, classics, because that's the category we went to. We click that, it'll give us all the classic stuff. We should be able to see, yep, we have the honors program front page, honors program requirements, honors program for students in Austria. And we could we'll click that and see how this comes through. It's actually not bad, right? We can see the, the raw HTML here. It's not too bad. You know, we've got H1s and things. So um, there's occasionally weird stuff. Like right down here, we just have an H5 just hanging out, an empty H5. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't clean up the data always. I just wanted to show you what it's like. Eventually, I do want to go through and clean it all up. But it's not 100% necessary before launch, at least not for most pages. I mean, ideally, I also wouldn't have like an H1, two H3s, and an H4 all right there at the top. <laughs> it's a little odd. Um, but all in all, that's not really bad that, you know, this data is coming out of a totally different content management system, and we're able to pull it into WordPress, and it, it basically works. Um, so I'm just going to update that. But we can see it also pulls over the correct publish date. So this data was actually published in 2014, long before I was working here. Uh, but this gives us a way to keep track of like how old is the data actually. So that's why we're bringing over the original published dates. Otherwise, everything would seem like it was published this year, which is definitely not the case. Um, wonderful. So now the next step would be make sure I get rid of this data in the spreadsheet. So it's just those three pieces. I'm going to delete that. And then on my other screen, I just have a checklist in Google Keep. So I'm just checking things off uh, as I go through. 
And I do want to, at this point, check how much time I have left. See if we can get into anything. Okay, about seven minutes. And I see there's a lot more questions in there. I'm not, I'm not ignoring the live chat forever. I will get back to it in about seven minutes. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to get one more type of data in. And um, it, depending on what we have, I, I may even need to make a custom post type here or taxonomy. Add categories to jobs. Okay. I need to get HR profiles. So this, I, I might need an, another um, custom post type for this. So first I want to try to find where this is on the website. So don't think about, there we go, human resources. I won't need to search for this one. I, I know where it's at in the menu. Uh, let's see, HR. I think that's these are where they were yeah so there's this whole section of why I chose Franciscan and it's people that work here and uh, it's their story about why they they work here so the data that I really want is this here and you know this image as well which should just be a URL linking that image for now so that's that's what we want to find so once again, I'm just going to grab some of this data and I'm going to go back over to our spreadsheet. I'm going to paste that in and search for it. No, couldn't find it. All right, let's try to grab it from somewhere else. Um, you got to be kidding me. Oh, whew. thank you. I, I, maybe since I had highlighted those sections, it was only searching in that section. So, uh, all right, great. So it looks like we, we have these, um, those same names of the people that we just saw up there. And this is in folder 615. So let's double check. Um, that, wow, this profile is actually for the uh, head of my department. So... Uh, I, I believe she's the, ex she's the executive director. I think that's her title. Um, great. So let's bring over everything here in the 615 folder. And we're going to create a new post type. And these are going to be HR profiles. Uh, as far as I can tell, they are definitely different from some of the other profiles that we've, we've brought over. So... Let's create the post type first, and then we'll we'll bring them over. So we we do have, we have an option actually. So we already have we can see in WordPress we have an HR section. So we could just bring these over into HR into that section, uh, human resources, and perhaps give them some sort of um, category or something that would say like okay these are our um, profiles we want to use either way we have to set up something either a custom taxonomy or a custom post type I think it'll be easier right now to do a custom post type it's something that could definitely be changed at some point Let me see what the URL looks like. This is going to be the probably the big deal, actually, uh, how the URL structure is. Whoa, that's awful. I don't know if you can see that URL, but that's no good. All right, so I don't know what's up with that one, but this one, let's see. All right, so our URL structure is hr slash profiles slash and then we have uh, last name, hyphen, first name. Hmm. All 
I'm trying to think what would be what would be the easiest way to bring this in. All right, let me think about it just just for a few seconds. Uh, I'm trying to think how our how our router works in our server.js file in our uh, React site. I think we'll be fine. I think, yeah, we'll be fine to just pull this into our HR pages. I don't even think we need a category. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Uh, there's going to be a slight chance that this data could be pulled in if you type in a different URL, but I'm not worried about that. It won't conflict with existing URLs. Um, so I, I think we'll be okay. All right, so let's go over. So this this will make it a lot faster. So let's verify. Was that six fifteen? Okay. Where am I at? Six. Yeah. So let's go six fifteen. Six fifteen, and let's go human. Human resource. <laughs> I think I did it. Let's let's make sure that I did it like that. Human resource. Yep. <laughs> uh, so when you bring it in, uh, in here, it, it has to be the singular. So it sounds a little weird to say I, human resource, but uh, I, that's how I named it. And we need. Let's let's go with Let's clean up the names first. All right. So we're going to clean up our names and we're going to add that to the slug. That'll help us uh it may not perfectly get the slugs how we want it but it'll get them a lot closer and I, I think that'll be easier we might luck out some of them might have the right slugs automatically we won't have to manually change them so we don't need this faculty department and I think we're I think we're good and that's what we need all right so let's save that run it there we are we got six of them Let's stop that process, and then now we can go back over here, check out our human resources, and see. Oh, nice. So we, we do have now these people here, and let's see. Let's check out our slugs. So I do. I want to see how it works with someone that has a doctor in their name, where the slugs come out. Ama All right, awesome. Those slugs are actually perfect. So it's been so long since we did that regular expression. I couldn't remember exactly what it would do, but it, it actually is uh, is perfect. It reverses the name, so you have last name first and then first name, it takes out doctor or any title like that, and it adds the hyphen. So uh, we, there'll be no need for us to go in and manually adjust those slugs. And you can see we, we have URLs, and fortunately they are relative URLs. So once I eventually transfer all of the image uh, the images from where they reside now to our wherever I'm going to have them later on. As long as I keep the same folder structure, all those relative URLs will still work. So it'll save a ton of time. And um, that should work. So I think, yeah, it won't work automatically right now because I need to set up a few more things in the router. Uh, but otherwise, as soon as I, I set up that route, in our server.js file, those should work fine. They, they should be good. Awesome. So my timer is is up. Um, I'm trying to think. So what do I need to do? I don't need to um, push anything to GitHub because all the changes we made were just transferring data. We didn't make any changes to code. So now, 
I got to keep an eye on my time so I make it to my meeting on time. But I'm going to go back to the chat. And, oh, let me check off. Check this off on my uh, to-do list here. It's always nice when you start checking things off and you see that list getting shorter. Um, but I am now... I'm going to spend the whole rest of the time answering your questions uh, and checking out your comments in the live chat. Uh, tech, Techie Gang says, Sir, I just graduated and have moderate knowledge in HTML and CSS. What should I do to get a great start in career? If you want a career as a developer, like a web developer, then uh, Keep learning more about HTML and CSS, but then also learn some JavaScript as well. Start into that. So I recommend uh, if you if you have some time now, uh, start with Free Code Camp. If you already know a little HTML and CSS, the first few lessons are going to be really easy for you. But then you'll you'll move into JavaScript, and that'll give you an, a nice foundation. Uh, so if you go to FreeCodeCamp.org. That's a great place to start. There are a lot of other resources, uh, but you know, kind of as a simple answer to your question, I would start there. And uh, as soon as you feel comfortable, start building some projects. Set up your Git, uh, your GitHub uh, profile, and uh, put your projects on GitHub. After you get a few projects made, get more comfortable, you could start applying to jobs. And uh, you know you gotta you have a real shot at becoming a developer. You know, depending on how much work you can put into it, you know, somewhere maybe in the next year even, uh, you'd be ready to get a good job. Um, so, I mean, it's different for everybody. It depends on a lot of factors, but you know, it's it's definitely a possibility. JavaScript is here. Hey, what's up? Harshit's here. Niki. Everybody's here. We got we have all our all our regular people. I think are are in here. Awesome. Harsha says, "Yeah, I remember that file." Yeah, that's honestly Harsha. That that has been great. I use it constantly. Uh, for migrating data, it has worked perfectly. Uh, JavaScript just says, why not use Algolia for search instead of powered by Google? So this is the, the search uh, that we were talking about. Um, I'm just going to type in rugby because I'm curious to see whether or not we have sports pages on here. Anyway, this website I've had very, very little to do with. It was uh, developed before I started working here. So a lot of the decisions, pretty much all the decisions were made without me, really. Uh, I've, the only work I've done on this is just really, really minimal things. Like if something looks really bad, sometimes I get to change it. Um, I did do some work to try to make it faster. And I did make it significantly faster, but it's still really slow. Like if your load times are like 160 seconds on 3G and you cut the load times in half, your site is still insanely slow, right? It still has 80 seconds load time. So I, percentage wise, it was impressive how I cut the load times, but it's still too slow, which is a big reason why we're completely redoing the site. So anyway, JavaScript, that's why we're not using Algolia because <laughs> I had no say in that. Hey, Dimitri says, hi, Jesse, how are you? Not bad. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> but other than that, I'm okay. Uh, anyway, how are you doing? If you're still here, Dimitri, let me know. 
Michael says, just remember to build a cute 404 page before launch, just in case. You know what? I, I actually put that in as an issue in the GitHub repo uh, that we need a 404 page. I thought about it sometime last week, and um, I, uh, I thought I definitely need to make this an issue so I don't forget. Chris asks, is that HTML inside your database? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about, like what, with that and what I was showing on the screen. And yes, like the the actual HTML uh, comes over. Michael says, instead of deleting out of the Excel, why not add a, um, uh, you know, a yes or no column for imported and filter out for blanks uh, or no? That way you won't accidentally delete something. That would probably have been a better idea. <laughs> At this point, I'm just going to keep going with, that, with what I have. I do have a copy of that Excel sheet that doesn't have any of anything deleted that I can refer to if I, if I need to. If later on I, I realize like I'm missing something, I can always double check on that. And I still have the actual database that is still intact. So there's a few ways I could still find that. But anyway, Michael, that, that probably would have been a better way. I just didn't think about it. JavaScript just says, I forgot, how does one shoot a vid or do a live for free code camp? Um, you could try to like make a video on your own and then send it to, you probably want to talk to Bo Carnes. Um, you could try talking to Quincy, but I think he usually says like talk to Bo because Bo handles a lot of um, like bringing people into the channel and letting them know like he, he did like some training with me uh, when I came in and Bo's actually the one that saw my live streams on my channel first and then invited me to come onto this channel so i would get a hold of him on twitter or through email or something like that and let him know you're interested you know send him a video that you've done something like that and then that's you know you just go from there uh good good manone i'm not sure how to pronounce that but good manone says isn't there a better way to do this if anyone knows a better way to do this, let me know. Uh, the problem that I found is that the data is so separated out. Uh, I, I can't bring over large chunks at a time if I want it to be organized at all on the other side. Uh, there's no... There's just nothing I could find. The only thing I could find that even remotely groups data into reasonable groups is that folder ID and there are so many folders that I, I have to go through and say okay what is in this folder what should we categorize it as and then bring it over so there were some chunks some folders that had a lot of stuff in it and I was able to bring over like 700 things at once and that was awesome but now I'm getting to the point where all the folders that are left only have a few things in each folder so it's just kind of slowing the process down a lot. I mean, really, if anybody thinks there's a better way to do it that would be easy to implement and switch to and get through all the rest of it, you know, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm open to trying, but at this point, I've migrated more than half of the data, I hope. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just I'm kind of going to like stick with what I have and, and get through it. Uh, Dextroyer of World says, what CMS was it? A CMS, a content management system, uh, just in case um, you're not familiar with that term. Uh, it was called Ektron. All right, and Niki says it's Ektron. Yeah. Yeah, and the new CMS is WordPress. The old one is Ektron. So Ektron is not very easy to work with, in my opinion. Um, not nearly as easy to work with as WordPress, 
and it costs a lot of money to use it every year and you have very limited amount of users uh, who can actually edit things in Xtron. WordPress, way more user friendly um, and you can have unlimited users for free. So it was kind of a no-brainer and like what, should we switch our content management system? Like absolutely. Another big thing is Ektron, the company, is no longer a company anymore. It got bought out by another company. So I'm not even confident that it's really receiving good support anymore. Hattie says, I am new with this project. Where do you get this data from and what will this website do? Are you writing a personal code and running it with WordPress? Are we able to do that? Um, Okay, so Nikki answered, so I'm writing the site in, this is how Nikki says, he's writing the site in React and using WordPress as a headless CMS. So yeah, the, I'm getting all the data from an old uh, database and uh, I'm bringing it over into WordPress. Uh, Heidi says, I heard that WordPress does most of the work, but you're writing your own code. Can you explain a little? Yeah, okay, so the code that you were seeing was, well, two, there are two things pieces of code that I showed you. One was the little bit of Node.js that we were using to migrate data. And then the other thing I, I showed briefly was a PHP plugin for WordPress. Uh, so if, if you're not at all familiar with WordPress, you, you, you write plugins in order to add functionality to WordPress. And in this case, we're adding post types. So like if you think of a post in a blog, that comes standard in WordPress. But if you want to add another piece of a type of content in, and um, you, you can do that and create a custom post type. So that's what we're doing as a way to organize data. Uh, and it's better for the people who need to edit it. And then it's better for us to be able to grab that data and use it in React if we separate it out and do a lot of you know, different post types, different categories and things. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. And then there's a whole lot of other code for a React site. So we're really only using WordPress for the content management and not for display at all. So that's why we say it's a headless WordPress install. Uh, all the display part of it is happening in React. Next Troyer of World says, LOL, Ektron. Do you, do you have experience with Ektron? Very few people have had experience with it, but I've never met anybody that actually likes it. I apologize if anybody that actually developed Ektron is watching in the stream. I'm, I'm sure that when it came out, it was probably very state-of-the-art. It's just, by today's standards, it's not... Um, a great CMS. Uh, Heidi says, why not use database directly? Uh, because um, we need a way for users who don't really have any experience with uh, programming to be able to edit content. So WordPress is that, that user interface that's gonna allow them to edit content and have it get saved to a database. So if we just were going straight from the database, it would be difficult for users to put data in. I, I wouldn't wanna put data directly in a database, and I know how. I still would rather have like a nice WYSIWYG editor to do it in, uh, if it's just some simple you know text content changes. So that's why we're, we're doing it like that. Hey, Phoenix is here. How you doing? Uh, Heidi says, can you share your list, please? I'm interested in how you have uh, created it. You mean my uh, my checklist? It was just, it's just check boxes in, uh, in Google Keep. So it's not any like custom thing. It's just the standard that comes with it. Uh, Chris Barker says, uh, I would I also would advise people who are familiar with CSS to look up CSS Grid. 
Uh, Rachel Andrews is a good place to start. She created the spec uh, grid. But okay, actually, that's a great. I, I've been meaning to, to learn more about CSS grid lately. Um, my wife and I both. We were just talking about it yesterday. Uh, so Rachel Andrews, I'll have to. I'll definitely have to look that up. Thanks for that, Chris. John's here. John Hansen says, uh, I'm here too. Hey, listening today as I'm painting up a storm. Awesome. All right. I don't, I don't know if any of you know, uh, that John is a really talented artist. So um, he's a man of many talents, programming and uh, art, and I'm sure other things that I don't even know about. Uh, Nathan says, really great content, Jesse. I love this content and delivery. Wow, I'm really, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Uh, Sonu says, hi. Hey, how's it going? Nathan says, create a solution for this that is generalized to migrate any data set. Uh, it would be cool to catalog the problems at each way uh, of an ideal solution. Yeah, I... I, uh, I uh, started doing this, I guess, before there was so much data, it was just so much data and it wasn't categorized in the best way that it was just really difficult to create a solution that would allow me to just bulk import data and, and really cover all the different situations uh, because some of it just wasn't there wasn't the same set of logic applied like routinely throughout the development of the site. So different people who don't even work here anymore added things in and uh, contract workers who never worked here added things in and it sometimes we had like student workers working on it and so it's just really difficult to come up with something that would work for all the data when it was just so uh, I guess in a sense like disorganized in some ways. Let me check my time. Okay, I only have like two more minutes, so I'm gonna just try to get some of the questions. Uh, Harsh is asking me about uh, JSAF. I really like it. I we can get in more into it in Twitter today. I'm actually super busy, so I, I apologize if I'm not um, that active on Twitter. For any of you that are that are you know trying to talk to me on any social media, uh, today's just a busy day for me. Um, Okay, Phoenix says West Boss's course on CSS Grid is also really awesome. All right, I'm gonna have to look into that as well. I haven't ever taken anything by West Boss, but everybody says it's awesome, so I'm gonna have to try it out. John Hansen says someone's him a bit of a birder as well. <laughs> Uh, Hattie says, I thought CMS is something used for both database and uh, showing all the content, and it can't be separated. But you said using CS CMS for database. Why didn't you use database directly? Yeah, so um, essentially you, you can separate them. So that's what we've done. We've separated all the, um, basically what a user sees when they come to our website is no longer controlled by WordPress. Uh, so essentially like you have, let's you can't really see my, I was gonna do something with my hands, but like imagine you have a database that lives here. The users who are content editors interact with the database through WordPress, which sits here. And then over here, separately, I can't get in the, <laughs> over here separately sits our React site and that's what users who are coming to the website will see. The React site pulls data from the database through WordPress. So like no one ever interacts directly with a database. WordPress is the intermediary between the two that's both helping to pull the data in in an organized way to our React site and helping content editors to be able to, in a very easy way, edit things that are in the database without even, even realizing there's a database there. So that's kind of what we're doing. So. I think, yeah, I definitely have to go now. My meeting's in just a few minutes. So 
Anyway, thank you all. I apologize if I didn't spend, couldn't spend as much time as I maybe normally would answering questions. Feel free to always you know, ask me questions in the comments to the videos, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, email, anything you like in any way you can find me. You can write me a letter if you want. I'm sure you can find my address if you Google me. It's probably not that hard. Uh, so you send me a text if you want to. Um, I know my phone number's out there as well. But anyway, I have to go to my meeting. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for uh, all your great uh, encouragement and questions. And uh, I had a great time doing the stream. It definitely woke me up a bit. And uh, I, um, I'm working on my home setup for streaming. Hopefully, I'll have it ready tomorrow so I can stream from home. I'll let you all know uh, on Twitter uh, for sure uh, if I will be streaming or not tomorrow. Uh, so... Hopefully see you all tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.